Hi guys, here's a list of 10 OP weapons you need to use in the new season of Modern Warfare Zombies. Some of these I've already made individual guides for on my channel, while others are new picks for the season, and each one kind of has its own unique flavor and playstyle, so once you've seen all of them, let me know which you're going to be using in the comments down below. I'll also show you the loadout that I'm using for each weapon once I've talked about why I like it. So number 10 on our list is the Akimbo Wasp. This thing is honestly just so much fun. As you can see here, it's going to beam zombies in tier 1 when you spawn in at gray rarity it's just gonna shred and even more so if you upgrade to green or blue rarity and part of the reason for that is just that you're shooting with two guns at once here it's like you got double tap on and what's great about this is that because you're pumping out so much ammunition the zombies that you're shooting at will often get staggered by all those bullets if that is they can survive the bullets and so for example if it's a higher tier enemy like a mangler or something you can often slow them down a huge amount just by shooting at them and that makes it a lot easier to take them down now that said as much as it's very strong and when it's tier three packed, it's fantastic because you've just got so much friggin' ammo. And so you can just beam into stuff to your heart's content in tier three. That's not actually the biggest reason I recommend this weapon. The biggest reason is because if you equip my attachments, which I'll show you in a second, and you just get to pack tier one, like just 5,000 points is all you need. You can actually infinitely shoot this thing. Like you can never stop firing bullets. It's actually insane. The way to do this is to just start firing one of your guns, but not both of them. And then when you've got about 50 bullets left, you're going to start firing with the other gun as well, holding both triggers down. And from that point on, while the first gun is automatically reloading, once you get to the end of the mag, the second one will still have 50 bullets left and it will just rinse and repeat. And if you're killing zombies doing this as well and picking up ammo, you will literally never run out. And it's just so much fun to do. The attachments I use to make this happen are the Akimbo Brace stock, obviously. That's a conversion kit in the bottom there. I then personally like the 50 round mag, not the 100 round mag. And that's because you've got so much ammo, the reloads are so far. You end up with 100 rounds in the mag anyway once you pack a punch tier 1. And the 100 round mag does decrease your mobility a lot more than the 50 round mag, even though it doesn't say that in the little pros and cons section. So 50 is the way to go in my experience. And then I'll chuck on whatever ammunition type I like. I'm going for high grain rounds. The Sonic Suppressor Barrel for extra bullet velocity and damage range. And the Wasp Reckless 90 Long Barrel because you don't need aim down sight speed, but extra bullet velo and a little gun kit control is always a good thing to have in the mix. Next, for a weapon that you probably haven't seen being used nearly as much as the Akimbo Wasps is the Longbow. I adore using this thing. When you pack a punch, it's basically got double tap. It's going to one hit everything for miles around. And if you get it at a decent rarity and tier three packed, it's going to one hit in tier three as well. And it can shoot super quickly if you use my attachments. And it's a sniper, yeah, but it doesn't feel like a sniper. Like you can shoot so fast with it and the ADS speed is so quick that it just feels like you're using a battle rifle most of the time. And honestly, it's just another one that's really, really fun. So alongside being crazy powerful, you also just get to have a really unique experience playing the game and it's a really good time. Now the attachment choices on this one are very important to making it work. So number one, I go with the Cronin Intlas MSP-12 sight. That increases your aim down sight speed. I go for no stock to keep you nice and mobile. The SAM Quick Bolt, which means that you rechamber really quickly. That's a really, really important one. And I also drop it down to the 10 round mag here, which is going to also increase your ADS speed. And remember, this is going to get boosted once you pack a punch, so 10 rounds actually isn't that bad at all. Finally, for underbarrel, we're using the X10 Phantom 5 Handstop, again, for faster sprint to fire and faster ADS speed. For the next weapon in the list, this is something that you can pick up from enemy mercs really easily in the match, and it's none other than the Handy Riot Shield. Now, you might already know that this thing negates some damage that zombies will do to you while you have it equipped, but you might not be aware of the full extent to which it actually does that. So if you spawn in with a Riot Shield that you've grabbed as contraband in a previous match, it's going to be gray rarity. And to do a little test here, in tier two, it's going to take seven hits on a zombie to kill one. And if you boost to green rarity, that's going to go down to six hits to kill. And if you go to blue rarity, it's going to be four hits to kill. So still quite a lot of hits to kill in tier two. But when you remember that it's not pack a punch yet, that's not too bad. Now, normally you can take about five hits from a zombie, assuming you have no armor before you go down. But if the zombie is hitting the riot shield, when it's again, just that regular rarity and it's not pack a punched, you can withstand and seven hits. Technically, this means that you have about 40% more health if the damage goes through the riot shield. But this gets even better when you pack a punch. So I said before, four hit kill if your blue rarity unpacked in tier two, but it's a two hit kill once you pack a punch just the first time. And it'll be three on an armored zombie, but still a two hit kill when you've still got two pack a punch levels to go is pretty damn good. But that's not the only bonus that you get once you pack. It also increases how much damage you can take through the shield. So instead of taking five hits to die, if you go through the shield, 
damage, you can take 9 to 10 hits to die. So that's effectively doubling your health. So if you're struggling in tier 3, and those zombies keep just nibbling at your ankles while you're running away, having this on your back is going to mean that you take so much less damage, and it's going to make your life so much easier. However, the one downside here is that the right shield does slightly slow you down when you have it stowed. That's a new change that they added in Season 1, so you do need to be aware of that when you're equipping it. Now, two last pro tips of this. You can honestly use it to take down things like manglers pretty easily. Obviously, I was under leveled here relative to this mangler in tier 2, but I still managed to bonk him to death pretty fast. And you can also add ammo mods to your riot shield now. So putting on something like cryo freeze and then bonking the zombie multiple times will freeze it and mean that you take it down that much faster. Next is the M13B, which you might think is a rogue pick here. But honestly, I think this is one of the most well-rounded weapons in the entire game. So not only is it a very reliable assault rifle that you can use at close range or at long distance, and it's always going to be there for you, taking zombies down very consistently. It's also got a secret trick up its sleeve that means that you can start one-shotting stuff in tier 3 faster than you can even blink. Like, this thing is crazy powerful. It all boils down to use of the underbarrel shotgun attachment, the Corvus Master Key. When equipped, as you can see, I mean, in tier 3 here, it's just stomping. It will absolutely slam anything in its path. And the same obviously applies to the lower tiers as well. The only word of warning on this one is that you do need to grab ammo from ammo caches to resupply it, as the regular ammo that drops on the floor will not resupply the shotgun, it'll just resupply the main bullets of the weapon. So make sure you're aware of that and you use that shotgun in specific scenarios where you need a lot of damage output really quickly. My attachments for the M13B are the Kimura RYL33 laser light, the 14-inch Bruin Echelon barrel, the sonic suppressor once again for the muzzle, the Corvus Master Key, like I said, as the underbarrel, and 5.56 NATO mono ammunition. Honestly, though, you can tweak those attachments to suit your playstyle and the way that you want to use the assault rifle part of the weapon, as long as you keep the Corvus Master Key on the underbarrel. Our next weapon that can one-hit zombies in any part of the map is one that might honestly shock some of you, because when I started playing Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, I did not think this would be viable, but I was just straight up wrong. It's none other than the humble throwing knife. You can spawn in with this thing, you can get more ammo for them from ammo caches, and they will one-hit zombies in tier 3 or two-hit zombies that have armor. And the best thing about them is that you can throw them into zombies and then just run past the zombie if the zombie is still alive, or run past the body on the ground if the zombie is dead, and it will resupply the throwing knife automatically for you, like you don't have to hold square to pick it up or anything. And so you essentially have infinite ammo on something that one-hits zombies. It's incredible. I can't recommend this enough. It's honestly better than probably most of the guns in the game, so definitely spawn in with the throwing knife next time you play. And a bonus tip, honestly, is to use decoys as well. Decoys are crazy OP, and the combination of those two together is mwah, chef's kiss. It's amazing. Next is a weapon that's going to make you feel like you're smacking the sh** out of everything. This thing swings faster than a pickaxe. Actually, it's way, way faster than a pickaxe. And you can just run through the zombies, whack, 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 whack. Two tapping them at grey rarity in tier one, no pap. You can just whack, 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 take out bounties in tier one, grey rarity, no pap, easy peasy. But obviously, if there are a lot of zombies around you, then you will still need to be careful. Now, to prove how strong this thing is, I started a timer on the screen a moment ago. And while I've been talking, I have been bonking the heck, God, I hate having to censor myself on YouTube, out of the Stormcaller. And 10 10 to 15 seconds later, the guy's dead. And that's only at PAP tier 2. If we keep using it at PAP 2 in tier 3, you can 3 hit armored zombies with it, which is so insane. And obviously, it's light, so you can run really fast with it. Now, one thing to bear in mind with this is that it's really bad for nests and strongholds because some spores can't be reached with it, and you'll just have to keep jumping and praying that you hit the damn thing. So do keep that in mind. In a moment here, though, I'll share a different weapon that you can use to complement the tonfa because I think they go really, really well together. But before we get to that weapon, I want to talk about out, probably the most viral kind of OP weapon in the community since the game came out, and that's the crossbow. You can find the crossbow in the world, and I mean, everyone and their mum has made a video on this, so I'm going to assume that you're already aware that the crossbow is crazy strong, but if you didn't already know, now you do. And just to prove that everyone's been using it, here's a clip of some other people using it to great effect. It's also very, very powerful for taking down boss zombies, taking down abominations, all that sort of stuff, so check it out if you haven't already. Next is a weapon that I really love. I think that this thing's really, really fun to use, and it is the Akimbo Tear. The fantastic thing about this is that it's spammable. So unlike the Longbow, where you're confined to just firing one shot at a time, if you mess with the Tear, it doesn't matter because you can just spam and get yourself out of harm's way really, really quickly. It's incredibly powerful. You'll never run out of ammo with it. And it's just plain fun to use. And for attachments, you obviously need the Akimbo Tear rear grip. And then the others, you can slightly tweak to your preference. But my personal favorites are Ulla's Fury trigger action, the 12mm snake shot ammunition, the ZU-16 heavy long barrel, 
barrel and the one milliwatt pistol laser. Next is our partner in crime for the Tonfa that I promised earlier. You will need PhD for this one, otherwise you are going to down yourself. Don't be that guy. It's none other than the grenade launcher RGR. Now this is probably the easiest weapon to use in the entire game and it really shines in ether nests and strongholds because you can just take out spores super easily and that's why it works so well with the Tonfa. You can just blindly blow those spores up. It's also fantastic for defense contracts. You can just spam choke points really easy and at pap tier one and green rarity, you're going to nuke any tier one zombie and kill tier two zombies in a couple hits, but obviously you get a lot of splash damage so you can take out a lot of zombies at once. Packed twice that green rarity, it's going to kill tier two zombies with pretty much one hit. But honestly, what's really amazing about this weapon is not purely its damage output, but it's also its utility. You can take this thing into tier three at any pack a punch level and it's still going to be useful because it stuns and knocks zombies down no matter what its pap level. And that means it makes your life very easy for getting quick escapes from places. And just generally, it's an amazing weapon to have on your back in your secondary weapon slot. For the final weapon in the list here, I'm going to do something a little different. So to get this one, you need to spawn into your game, do two contracts to get yourself 5,000 points, and then drive into tier three. You need to look around the weapon wall buys for a gold rarity weapon. And once you find it, spend your 5,000 points to buy it. Then you can go through the rest of the game as normal doing contracts to get that weapon upgraded. And that is going to be the final weapon on the list. Whatever the game gives you that's gold rarity, because the difference between a green or blue rarity and a gold rarity is pretty massive in this. And so even if you're using an OP weapon, if its rarity level is holding it back, it's still going to be worse than something gold, which you bought off the wall. So give the strat a try. Let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe for more videos like this one.